your microphone set up. Cool. I am here. Uh, we'll get you All right, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I think I'm mostly going to listen, but I'm here with y'all. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. So you know, this is uh, this is our 38th community call, uh, starting at 2024 strong. Um, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to you know recap some of the highlights. A lot of stuff happened last year. We don't have to go too deep into it, as I think we want to focus a bit on 2024 and what's coming. As I think most of the community might uh, might be interested in. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I think maybe we divide this up into like three categories to keep it simple. You know, between some of the development uh, uh, we've done over 2023, some of the community stuff, uh, and then I think the larger Gork ecosystem developments. Um, so I think you know, you know, obviously Q1, Q2, uh, there was a lot of building happening. You know, shout out to product engineering. Um, you know, supporting a lot of the contracts for vaults, state sinks, you know, the decentralized Oracle network, which is obviously really important. Um, you know, Goric launched mainnet 1B in June. Uh, you know, we got offer legibility in Kepler. I still celebrate uh, that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have an anniversary yeah, for it next June. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a write up of some of the stuff as well. You know, we'll keep talking about it, but I'll, I'll kind of fly through this because if not, I think Dean, you could spend. 30 minutes on each of these <laughs> talking about uh, in depth about their value. Um, yeah. So obviously mobile wallet support. Awesome. Uh, we had the inner protocol multi-collateral support in October, much more recently. Um, and I know, you know, upgrade 12 and 13, which brought up a bunch of really, really great stuff to the chain. I don't know if you want to. Actually, talk I wanna, about I, 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 before you go past the mobile wallet support, I think that's yeah. one where, where I, I just want to say a couple more words on it because it's, it's such an important thing for the, you know, for the future of crypto and everything else is that the, you know, is, is, you know, I, I presented at the, the intense summit and, you know, our, the offer support that we got into Kepler, where you, you know, that is part of the core model of Agoric, you know, sort of the unique on Agoric of, you know, here's what I will give you and here's what I want in exchange and the system protects you from, you know, fr from, from misbehavior of the contract. That is so huge and so important and it's one of those rare things where it simultaneously increases user safety and security and usability of the system and so that's one that you know it's it's why metamask you know is following our, uh, uh, you know a bunch of our ideas for getting into the ui it's why kepler took that pull request it's why it's why you know other wallets going into the future will take that kind of thing as a model is it's a really big step forward and it's intrinsic to our overall architecture. And so that's something that we will, you know, be doubling down on at various times uh, over over 2024 because of the huge value to users, especially as we go out to, you know, non crypto users, you just see people getting uh, uh, getting surprised and caught off guard all the time. And we need to protect people as we get out to more and more, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of users. Um, uh, and, and so that's, that's a critical, interesting element that I didn't want to gloss over too quickly there. <laughs> no, thank you. That's great. That's really good context. No, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, other, I think other kind of large developments, I, in my opinion, you know, for inter protocol, you know, also adding multilateral support, very important for a lot of reasons. For those who don't know, inter protocol, um, you know, IST, um, is the interstable token really core to our to the Gork economy uh, for a lot of reasons. And we actually have a great article on our blog if you want to learn more about IST um, to dive into that. Uh, I'll probably, you know, maybe we transition to a bit of the community stuff as well. You know, events, a lot of a lot of crypto events this year. Uh, you know, I think we were pretty strategic in choosing the ones that we felt kind of most most aligned with what we're what we're building. Um, you know, that's obviously quite a wide range from, you know, interop summit that, you know, actually put on, which is great during East Denver. Um, you know, the Gateway Conference, um, always a pleasure, and Osmocon and Nebula in Paris, which, Dean, I think you had some really interesting discussions about some cross-chain stuff as well that we'll, we'll get into later. Um, and, you know, we did our, we did do Cosmoverse um, in Istanbul with our own Dev Day, and, you know, our BD team was at Web Summit this year. So all in all, you know, it's been a pretty, pretty busy year, um, you know, a lot of good conversations, a lot of, a lot of good developments there. Um, and, you know, I have, I have to note the Chainboard Academy that the, uh, the, uh, Byte Pitch folks put on, which was, uh, I believe eight weeks, uh, virtual Academy, uh, to drive, um, you know, share basically the zero, zero to hero developer journey for, for uh, a set of, uh, developers who wanted to learn how to build on a Gork. Awesome to see that. 
Um, and we'll talk about some of the other stuff by pitch has done. And, you know, again, on the community front, it's, you know, we, we do this thing called inside the build, which is a series where, you know, we have teams that are um, partnering with us on an infrastructure level, uh, give basically 20 minute presentations um, about how their solution is uh, valuable to, you know, developers building on Agoric, but also not just developers, users as well. Um, and those have been really awesome to see. And, uh, you know, we, we plan to continue those into 2024, which we can get to. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have uh, uh, a lot of developer engagement programs that we have internally that um, we're starting to kick off. And I'll, I'll get into those later as well around how how we're looking at growing our developer footprint globally. Um, and, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else on the community front you want to touch, Dean, but, you know, I know there's a bunch of other ecosystem stuff as well. <laughs> a lot of stuff in 2023. Well, uh, you know, there there've been uh, we our community has gotten more active and more engaged, um, and have been, uh, uh, you know, also pushing us in a bunch of ways. Uh, we've been really working to increase our engagement. I'm really glad you all are here uh, listening. Um, I'm really glad of the activity uh, in Telegram conversations and Discord and in Twitter. And that's something that we were, you know, we will steadily continue to do. Um, we know how important that is and really appreciate, you know, the the, the time people and attention people give um, to the stuff that we're working on. We will have lots to, to, to talk about this year um, as we, you know, ramp up and roll this stuff out. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I, I do want to get to some of the 2024 stuff because I'm sure some of the community members want us to, to start focusing on, but you know, there, there are two big things, you know, I, there are a lot of integrations we've done with, you know, Fitco and subquery and Mikado, but I think, I think the launch of, um, you know, launch of Creed in October and then more recently Crabble, um, for short-term lending of NFTs. Um, so those are two of the apps that, that launched very recently, which, you know, um, you can read up on on our blog, on our forum, uh, but again, you know, really, really excited to to see those things come to fruition. Um, so, before I transition to this, I don't know if Dean, there's anything else you want to add. If not, we can kind of kick off. Yeah, the lots, you know, lots. I, I very much like a, a lot of the, um, uh, you know, the, the chain level and token level stuff. Pine Street integration, as you said, BitGo, um, Gate.io listing, um, and you know, so there's more ways to get build. Um, and, you know, but on, on the engineering side, the other thing that people might not have noticed, it, but is really important is since September, we moved to the cadence that we promised over summer of steady monthly releases. Um, and so, and, and the efficiency of those releases, the, the deployment of those releases, the smoothness of getting them out there, um, you know, ha has been increasing where we really get, you know, continual performance improvement, continual, you know, addition of and unlocking of functionality, um, you know, easier releasing of third party apps, those kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, A, I'm excited that, that the engineering team has, has stepped up to that, but I'm also very grateful for, you know, the, the, some of the releases require chain restart and the validators are all over that and just execute that beautifully. Some of them do not. And that's in some sense, even more exciting where we can have a vote that will deploy and upgrade some contract, um, uh, without it, you know, with, with the chain, you know, barely even noticing. Um, and so that's going to improve and increase over time. We will continue that that stream of releases, and there's a roadmap of those going on out into uh, you know into 2024 as we release more and more functionality supporting some of the initiatives we'll talk about later. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love software, you know. <laughs> well, we we, we didn't know. <laughs> Great, thank you, Dean. Uh, yeah, so let, let's pivot a bit to 2024. I'm going to bring up. Uh, Roland, I think. Yep, here you are. If you want to jump up here, Roland. Hey, Santi. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Uh, so thanks for having me up here, uh, Dean. Good good overview of 2023 here uh, in terms of development. I, I think maybe one thing to add, which will kind of run into my first bullet for 2024, is we also, especially towards the end of Q4, had a, a big focus on improving end user UX. Um, so there are a few friction points in in working with Agoric DApps. Um, for example, needing to use a separate tab for the Agoric Wallet UI, um, which we made great strides on. So um, Dean already talked a little bit about um, the mobile wallet support, but as part of that, what we also did was uh, allow dApps to very easily send their transactions directly to Kepler for signing, have Kepler display them the right way, uh, and which also means from the user side, you don't actually need to use the end, uh, the wallet UI anymore for those those things. You still can use it for IBC transfer, um, but uh, as 
we'll see sort of coming into 2024, you may not need it for that either uh, moving forward. And so really want to continue that focus uh, as one of our key things moving into Q1. Uh, we have a few other uh, end user friction and, and quality of life improvements that we're really excited to ship relatively soon. Um, one of them will be uh, avoiding the need for a separate transfer or a separate transaction to provision a smart wallet. Um, so those of you that have interacted with Agoric uh, dApps already, you had to uh, contribute 10 build to the community fund uh, in order to get an Agoric account. We want to make that more seamless because that's something we saw as, as a friction point and a point of confusion for, for users. Um, that will just get rolled into the first transaction on chain. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then we're also excited to, to bring in uh, Leap Elements, uh, which is sort of a, a modal that would pop up and allow you to do a combination of cross-chain transfer, IBC unwinding. I think it has Kado in there for, for Fiat on-ramp. And so it's, a, it's an easy way for users of any application to get the assets that they want to the Agoric chain uh, with one click. So those, those efforts will be continuing. Um, so for example, more wallet support, MetaMask Snap, Sleep, uh, and, and new wallets that pop up. Uh, and, and sort of an ongoing effort to make sure that Agoric, user, Agoric end users have a good quality of life for not only inter-protocol, but any other application that launches. Um, and, and I realize I'm, I'm worried about time, so I'm, I'm going to start moving a little bit faster. On, on other efforts on the development side, we are really focused in Q1 on building out our cross-chain capabilities, which are necessary for the next application we expect to launch, which is Calypso. Um, so the Mystic Labs team has has talked a little bit about Agoric before. If you were with us at Cosmoverse, they, they did a quick demo. Um, they are building re a really exciting cross-chain application that is, is sort of something that almost can't be built elsewhere, um, or at the very least, it's significantly easier to build this kind of thing on Agoric than it is on any other smart contract platform. And so we're really doubling down on that um, in Q1 as, as sort of an uh, not only a launch, but sort of a larger effort from the development side. Um, so you'll you'll be hearing more about that from us uh, as we as we get closer there. Um, so that's an effort from the the engineering and developer relations side. And then uh, you may have also seen uh, the the docs have gotten a big improvement. So getting started uh, now is much faster, much clearer, um, and we've gotten good feedback so far. If you are a developer or someone that's sort of been interested in diving into Agoric, uh, now's a good time. So you know, hop into the getting started docs and let us know. Give us feedback if anything's either not working for you or not clear. Um, we have an ongoing, you know, a big effort on our end is to continue improving the documentation experience. Um, making it more use case focused, making it more goal oriented, um, and sort of progressively letting developers build the skills they need to, to deploy an Agoric um, quickly, but making sure they don't need to spend a whole bunch of extra time reading things that may not be relevant to their, their active need. Um, moving a little faster here, uh, a few other uh, um, uh, efforts for inter-protocol. So we have an open source liquidation bot that's, that should be coming soon. Uh, improvements to liquidation visibility, improvements to uh, multi-collateral support on, on inter-protocol. And then we also expect uh, the community largely will, will likely drive more collateral additions. So Gork Opco development is, is mostly out of the pathway there. Um, I think we probably have some testing that needs to happen for each new deployment. But beyond that, it can be community driven. And we're really excited about that. Um, we're, we'll be upgrading the interchain stack, which is sort of IBC, you know, Comet BFT, and and making sure that we have uh, we're, we're sort of getting up to V7 there, and then we're also push, pushing for upgradability throughout the chain. So we have a bunch of different layers. We need to make sure that those are able to be upgraded to sort of unblock future releases. So that's that's a bunch of big near-term efforts. Um, expect you'll hear more from us on larger Q 2024 goals sort of coming over the next several weeks. And I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Santi. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Roland. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably maybe touch on some of the ecosystem stuff. I mean, you you know, we, we talked about what happened in 2023. I wonder if uh, we have Vanessa here. Let me see. Vanessa, are you able to? Uh... Yeah, I'm here. Um... Hello. Yeah, hi guys. Um, no, I mean, we we're covering a lot of ground quickly. 2024 is going to be exciting. Um, it is exciting to see Calypso will be launching this year. Uh, you know, Roland highlighted a lot of the key points as to what they're building and why it's differentiated in Agoric. 
Uh, they're also an eager and exciting team that have background in DeFi and uh, working and building open source software for um, enabling better experiences for the DeFi community. We're also going to be welcoming new dApps to launch in the ecosystem this year. We're in talks with a number of companies that have existing user base or um, reach in certain industries. So we hope to bring some of those exciting announcements to you over the next few months. And our conference attendance from our team is still going to be by and large on the crypto space, but also reaching some of that growth of existing companies in the Web2 space, much like we did with Web Summit in Lisbon. We're expanding our footprint to other Web2 conferences to bring Web3 to them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in, in thinking of these teams, it, it pairs nicely with a lot of how we're thinking about developer communities um, and how we start growing those, right? So, so a big thing we're doing, uh, we started last year and we're actually like scaling out much more now is is you know generating a, a a more frequent cadence of meetups that um also result in more technical workshops in key areas so we you know we've been kind of on this path with with um in turkey with our with our advocates onar and bugra who have been leading that charge well, tremendously um you know we were um, recently uh jeep one of our team members was recently at uh, ibw in india right to look at you know how we started scaling our footprint there and um, and actually a few of us, including myself, are in Argentina now. <laughs> so, you know, we're meeting with, um, you know, some advocates and technical folks here to start growing the community down here as well. And so, you know, we're really looking at some of these key areas and, and building, um, you know, working to build a presence here. Um, and so, you know, I think on the 6th, we actually have our next event meet up in Turkey, which is actually the first Africa themed web three event in Turkey. So they're partnering with, um, ambassadors and some, uh, other technology companies that are primarily focused on African countries and then, uh, but hosting the event in Turkey. Uh, and then we're also, you know, for anyone who's in Argentina area or knows somebody there, we're also planning a meetup uh, on the 12th or 13th to be decided uh, down here. Uh, and then we're, again, as I mentioned, you know, working uh, on setting this stuff up in India and a few other countries as well. So um, if you're somebody who's, you know, who has background, uh, you know, community management or community, you know, run events, uh, any background in that, or, you know, you have more of a technical, technical background and you want to run workshops, um, in your region, like, let us know. And we're, we're really happy to talk about that. Um, you know, we've already gotten some pretty good interest from different areas. So we're, you know, the, 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 the ball starting to roll. <laughs> um, so we're super excited about, about that. Um, and I don't know if anyone else wants to touch on that here, but, uh, if not, I can, I can kind of transition to other stuff, but. Cool. Uh, so maybe, you know, I'd love to bring up, uh, Rick, do we have you here? Rick, yeah, you here? I am here. Hey, how you doing? Rick? Hey. I'm good. Happy new year. Thanks, and man. happy Thanks. new year to everybody in the crowd today. Thanks for coming guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Rick. I'm with DCF and, uh, I was invited in today to give you guys just a bit of an update on a couple of things that we've been involved in that we thought the community might be interested in. I mean, in the spirit of looking back on 2023, uh, you know, great year in a wide variety of ways, uh, including just seeing, you know, the nonstop heads down energy that happened during the bear market, right? So, so people really building, really making things better, really laying foundations and getting ready for that next sprint, which we think is upon us now. So that was super encouraging to see and, and made me feel really good about the resources at Agoric, the depth of resources, the, the depth of skills. And, and also just watching the community, particularly the validator community, uh, get involved and keep things going. It's been really awesome to watch, and I'm really looking forward to 2024 as a result. Last year for DCF uh, brought the launch of our grants program. We launched that in conjunction with Cosmoverse. Uh, we've had a few applications come in, not an overwhelming number. I think we've had five at this point in time, and one of those was withdrawn. Uh, we've granted one of them, and uh, that is currently up as uh, public beta, and that would be cosgov.org, C-O-S-G-O-V dot O-R-G. And Cosgov is a GUI that allows you to post proposals for the Agoric L1. And we are looking to expand that throughout Cosmos, and we're also looking right now at reskinning it and improving the usability on it before we go through a full public launch. But it is up and it is usable. We've been getting good feedback from people who've been trying it out. I encourage you to get in there and take a look at it uh, and stay tuned as we do the full launch with the new skin. And 
uh, and we look at expanding CosGov, we'd love it to embrace the other Cosmos chains. You know, this is supposed to be governance tooling for, you know, the Cosmoverse, not simply the Agoric L1, just so happens we're starting with Agoric. Uh, also, 2023 brought the refresh Wait, of our... You, yep, yep, yep. Before yep. you leave CosGov, uh, yeah. one thing I wanted to add, as, you know, speaking from a developer's perspective, it turns out it has been incredibly useful as we've been doing, you know, both internal hackathons, external hackathons, working with folks that are starting to, you know, build quick apps in JavaScript to be able to apply it to our test nets and to even local test nets to do exactly the same thing of, of upload bundles and, and deploy local governance and things like that. So the tool, it, it's not just that it works for the Agoric main chain, it works for, you know, we've been, we've used it across, you know, 10 different chains in the last month or two. So, so that, that project that you guys started is really good. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So people get out there, try it out and help us expand it. In fact, this dovetails our, our I was actually talking about the delegation program. I'll come back to this. Um, we started the refresh of our delegation program near the end of 2023. We accepted applications all the way up to the end of November. Uh, we wound up taking 44 applications in. Uh, we are still reviewing those. We were hoping to get it done before the end of the year, but the holidays caught us. Uh, so expect to hear back from us on delegation uh, within the next couple of weeks, and we'll certainly get it out the door before the end of this month. So that's something else that's carried over from 2023. Now, to go back to what I was just saying, uh, we launched over the holidays between Christmas and New Year's very quietly the DCF Bounties program. So if you go to dcfoundation.io right now, you'll see up on the main nav there is a bounties link. And you'll find in there the first three bounties that we've put up just to get the system up and running. And all three of those relate to the expansion of COSGOV. So if you take a look at COSGOV and think, wow, this is really cool. I'd love to have this for osmosis, for whatever. You know, there's grants to our bounties uh, against doing that work. There are also bounties for adding different template types and expanding that tool. So jump in there and take a look. And bookmark that page as we will be building out that bounty section as we add more things across Q1. Looking forward to 2024, DCF is, is really pumped about the fact that the improvement in the market means that we've got more flexibility with our treasury. We also feel that, you know, inner protocol with the vaults functionality and the extensibility that is built into inner protocol it has us positioned very, very well to take advantage of that next bull market run. And we're gonna be scaling up to meet that demand. And we're really looking forward to having a, a very bullish year, uh, a very hard pushing year, a hard driving year that's gonna see us in a much different position this time, 2025. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today, Santi. If, unless there's something that I've missed, and I'm happy to also take questions if that's the case as well. So I'm just handing it back to you now, Santi. Thanks a bunch. No, no. Um... I'll jump in and thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rick, for that. Uh, because you made me you made me realize I had to say one thing with respect to the dele our delegation program. Uh, it is largely done, largely distributed. There, we were waiting for some tokens to finish unbonding. So there's one last wrinkle that needs to be done, and it'll be done by the end of the week for any validators in the audience. Apology for that delay. Uh, that'll happen this week. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and I also want to mention some other stuff on the on the some of the marketing side. So we're uh, our content team is actually partnering with an agency uh, to produce a lot more user oriented content. Um, you know, in talks with our community, that's something people have brought up. They think we can do a lot more of, so we want to improve there. Um, so we're actually really excited for that, um, and you should start seeing that very soon. Um, we also have a, a handful of marketing campaigns for this year, and especially the first half. You know, more specifically that. Um, will really uh, drive, um, you know, and drive the refresh of how we want to position ourselves in the market um, and communicate that agoric value prop kind of more effectively. So both of these things are kind of related with each other, but, you know, we're really, we're kind of really hyped to get this out there. Um, we think uh, it's going to help, um, you know, connect us with the kind of projects and developers who, who we think uh, will find agoric as the right chain. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, marketing is also, again, really focused on expanding our global presence. You know, we do have a lot of these developer engagement programs, but as part of that, it's also branding events that we want to put on um, to really, really highlight the Agoric value prop and why, why we're kind of uh, the best chain to build on. Um, and so keep an eye out for those as well. Um, and I guess maybe the last thing, you know, we are uh, very, very early discussions. I don't know if Dee might get mad at me for dropping some alpha here, but 
you know, very early discussions around, um, you know, what a virtual hackathon might look like. Um, so if folks have ideas around that, we're, we're also open to hearing those, um, but keep an eye out for that because it is something we're uh, really excited about. Um, so more to come very soon, but 2024 is gonna be a packed year. Uh, and, oh, I'm yeah, so mad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you guys usually have to sit on me. I wanna talk about the stuff we're doing for, you know, cross chain uh, 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 stuff and chain abstraction, which we'll talk about, you know, later this oh, month. Oh boy. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a juicy one. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll wait. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. Deal. Yeah, we'll have to stop rolling from uh, from sneaking alpha two here. <laughs> but all right. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. If there any uh, anyone else wants to chime in, jump into anything that I might have missed for twenty twenty four. If not, this is this is awesome. I will shout out. I see Web three Wiz in the audience. He's been covering uh, the yes. arcane news on Twitter, and and I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, to see that, and and uh, and as I said, for the folks that are now active in Discord, even even when they're pushing us to to do more, it's it's been really uh, uh, it's been really valuable and helpful. So, thank you all. Yes, thank you everybody. Santi is never going to keep me from spilling alpha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, thanks, folks. Thank you. Bye, bye, awesome, everybody. Uh, start of your year. Thank you, everybody.